All right, so we're going to continue our discussion of summary statistics. Uh, in the last video, we uh, loaded up some quick summary statistics, visualized the data, got a quick sense of the data. Uh, with this one, we're going to go through um, kind of the specific individual function that lets you know the summary statistics. Hope to cover a bit. So in the video description, uh, you can see kind of a breakdown of all the topics I discuss and with links to help you skip ahead if you're interested in just skipping ahead to straight to what you Great, so in order to work through the functions in R that do summary statistics, we need to load a little data first. So I've created this object over here. So by running this code, we now have a, a variable in our object called manually inputted data. You could have called it anything else. That is assigned to, or that's equal to, and then this stuff over here. So C and then parentheses says create a vector, and this vector is just 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. If you think of those as observations or numbers, what have you. So in order to find the mean, conveniently, it's called mean. The function's called mean. Manually inputted data. And that gives us the mean of 3.92. So uh, manually inputted data is kind of a big name, so I'm going to just call this then x to save time typing. OK, so now x is that vector. Perfect. So mean is just the average of all of these numbers. Um, so what other summary statistics do we care about? Well, it, we have the median. And in R, you just type in median. So the median of this is 3. Um, in addition to median, you care about the minimum. The minimum of this vector is 0. Your max, the maximum is 9. You also might care about the range. So the function in R called range, it actually gives two values. It gives the minimum value and the maximum value. So if you want the statistical range, that is how much does your data range, you need to do min of your data, actually max of your data minus the minimum of your data. And that gives the range. So this data range is uh, over 9. You might also be interested in how many observations are in your data. So for that, we have this length function. So the length of x is 13. 13 is just the count, so how many variables there are. There's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13 values in our manually inputted data, or I labeled it x. Uh, let's say you also wanted to add up all the values in this vector. Well, that function is called sum. So if you wanted to do the sum of x, you do sum parentheses x. That gives you the sum, so adding up all of these vectors. Uh, if you recall the equation for the mean, it's the sum of your observations divided by the total number. So mean of x is equal to, as a reminder, we're creating this new variable called mean underscore x and we're assigning it, that's the less than or equal to sign, we're assigning it the following function. So it's the sum of x divided by uh, the total number of observations, and that function is the length of x. And that should give us the mean. So when we call up that variable that we created, the mean of x, press enter, that gives us the mean of x, which is exactly equal to what that r function gave us. Excellent. Uh, the other one thing I want to point out is notice when we typed in just mean x and then hit enter, it then immediately returned the value for the mean of x. But you alternatively could have done this thing where you create a new variable. Uh, so down here we created mean underscore x and then assigned it the equation. Uh, sometimes it's more helpful, uh, sometimes it's more easy when you have dealing with larger and larger equations to create these uh, variables that are assigned the value of the mean. So you might want to call it like mx is equal to the mean of x. And now you just have mx variable that you could include in other equations going forward. So, you know, um, and it just carries on mx as being equal to this number. So what's the variance of x? The function name is just var, v-a-r, gives us the variance. 
And then the standard deviation, the function name is just SD. I think I showed this in the previous video. Um, lastly, there's this cool little summary function. So the summary of x, oh, I spelled summary. The summary of x spits out a few ver values. So there's the minimum, the smallest value, the first quartile. So that's the point in which 25% are below and 75% of the values are above. The median, uh, which is where 50% of the values are below, 50% of the values are above that value. The mean, third quartile, and then the maximum value. Um, cool. So in the description of the video, I'll be sure to post the code and the, and the data that I'm working with so you can just follow along exactly what I did. Um, you'll notice what we just did, we, we dealt with this manually inputted data. So, you know, we, we created this thing over here, manually inputted data, we called it equal to this vector of all these observations. But usually what you'll be doing um, is very large data sets, uh, if you have an assignment or something. Uh, so you're not going to be manually inputting that data. So what I now want to do is just go through the same summary statistics we did while uploading data. Um, you know, from a CSV file. So right, first off, we got to load some data. Uh, in the description, I posted our code as well as the data we're using. So you can just follow this code here to load the data automatically. This actually will load it uh, if you have access to the internet. So I'm going to load up this data. It's called conveniently, yeah, loaded data. And let's just start off with summary statistics for our loaded data. Great. So this data, you can see, has nine variables, I think. No, ten variables. You've got x, hhx, all the way down. Uh, we're just going to be dealing with sleep, the sleep variable. Um, and you can see it points out the min, first quartile, median, mean, third quartile, max, and then this value of NAs. So let's find out the, let's say, the mean of our loaded data for sleep. So there's this whole R, R object. It has 10 columns. And you know, there's these two columns up there, and then FPX, sex, BMI, sleep, education, height, and weight. So in order to find the mean, if I were to just do the mean of all of loaded data, it would give this value here. Uh, but we're curious. It's giving the mean for all 10 observations. But we're specifically curious with the mean for sleep. So what we need to do is indicate that we just want the mean for sleep with this dollar sign it says go to the loaded data object and then look at the column labeled sleep oh and it gives an na so where did this na come from well this na came from uh when you we, we did the summary statistics for the full loaded data you saw these na values here so there's 128 NAs in sleep, in education there's 49, so on and so forth. Uh, if you were to look at this in like a spreadsheet, what would it look like? So you can see all of these NA values here. They're usually just mean not available, so uh, like missing data. This happens to be a survey from the National Health Institute. It's called the National Health Institute Survey. Uh, and sometimes people simply refuse to give information or they say they forgot that information. And for those missing values, they either give a number here that's extraordinarily high or it puts in a little NA value. So when we calculate the mean, it's trying to calculate over these non-numeric values, which gives us this, you know, this basically it's an error. It can't calculate the mean. But it's a very, there's a very easy fix to calculating the mean uh, when there's NAs present. We simply need to add a little line so to uh, the mean function. So you got mean loaded data dollar sign sleep. So go to the data uh, loaded data and then go to the sleep column comma and then do the following little code. So you want to do na dot uh, rm for remove equals true. So now this is the mean for sleep. Uh, removing all of those NAs. Uh, and you can do this for all the other summary statistics. So here's the median. Here's the minimum. 
You got the max. Wow, 19 hours of sleep is a lot in a day. You have the range. You can find the statistical range. So the, this range is just the minimum and the maximum values. And then the minimum minus, sorry, the maximum minus the minimum is the statistical range of 16 hours. Uh, you could find a count. So how many observations do we have here? Oops, sorry, and length uh, doesn't need the NA remove. It just counts how many total observations there are, and it has to include the NAs. Uh, and then lastly, sum. Once again, NA, so we have to do the uh, NA remove function. Great. Uh, and of course, can't forget variance and standard deviation. So var and then standard deviation. But one thing you may have noticed that I forgot to mention here is we have the mean, the median, the mode, standard deviation, range, all these great things. But what did I forget? I forgot to add the, the mode. Um, and I'll actually do that in another video because it requires a little bit extra work.